I recently created a series of videos that walks you through the process of setting up a matchmaker and lobby system using AWS that works with your Godot client. Now, if you'd rather not go through the entire process of setting up that backend yourself, well, I created a one button deployment matchmaker and lobby system that you can find down in the description. It basically uses CloudFormation, a tool provided by AWS, to code your infrastructure as a single template file that can be deployed at any time. And I'll talk more on that later towards the end of the video. Now let's just see how it works. So the first thing we wanna do is create an S3 bucket so we can store the code for our Lambda function. So go over to the S3 bucket section and hit create bucket. Go ahead and name it. I'm naming it matchmaker Lambda code because this is what I have defined in the CloudFormation template. Now you can change this to whatever you'd like, but if you wanna use the templates default values out of the box, just go ahead and name it the same as what I'm naming it. Okay, and then everything is default is okay and hit create bucket. Great, and now there's your bucket. Now, if you've downloaded this project, go ahead and upload the Lambda code to this bucket. So let's go ahead and hit upload and then go ahead and drag over the zip file and hit upload. Now you have all the Lambda code available from your S3 bucket. So the next thing we're gonna do is go over to the CloudFormation tab. Now in the CloudFormation template tab, go ahead and hit create stack with new resources. Select upload template file and then hit choose file. Select the one button matchmaker YAML file and hit open and go ahead and hit next. Name your stack. And you can see here that these are all the names of the resources that will be created. For example, the DynamoDB table, the name of the Lambda function, and the name of the API gateway. Now you can change those or leave them as default, but the two things that need to match is the bucket that you created for the Lambda code, which we did name this, and the actual upload zip file that we uploaded to that bucket. So if we take a look back at the bucket real quick. Yep, we named it matchmaker Lambda. And that's what this is. These two parameters need to match the S3 bucket and the name of the zip file that contains our Lambda project respectively, or else the CloudFormation template won't know where to find them. So once you've got that sorted, go ahead and hit next. Scroll down and hit next again. And this is just basically showing us what we're creating for the stack. You can kind of go through and review. These are the parameters we've set. The stack failure option, which just means that it will roll back on failure. So if there's a problem during the creation of the CloudFormation or the creation of the resources when the CloudFormation template is running, it'll just go ahead and roll back and remove any of the resources that it created. And I'm just gonna recommend leaving that on. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's this acknowledgement checkbox that you need to go ahead and check. And what this checkbox is making you acknowledge is that this CloudFormation template is actually creating policies with permissions that's gonna enable your Lambda function to write and read from a WebSocket and access a DynamoDB table and also create logs to the CloudWatch service. So it is your responsibility to review everything that's created and the costs and everything associated with those resources. So make sure you review those things as if you end up generating costs, that's gonna be on you. So make sure you understand what this is creating and everything that's involved. Most of the resources on here have a generous free tier, so you probably won't have to worry about it too much, at least until you scale up. But again, the responsibility ultimately relies on you to review and understand these concepts. So once you've acknowledged that, go ahead and hit submit. And that's your one button matchmaker lobby system in action. So what we do now is we wait for the CloudFormation process to run. So I can go ahead and hit refresh and you can see that it's already created certain things like this matchmaker Lambda role, this matchmaker WebSocket Lambda function and so on and so forth. And you can see here the matchmaker table has been created. And if we keep refreshing, it's almost done. It's creating the routes in the API gateway. And if we refresh again, Okay, look at that. So the matchmaker lobby is complete. As you can see here, it says create complete. And over here in our list of stacks, it says create complete. That's it. The matchmaker lobby system is now ready to go from your Godot client. That's how easy it is. If you want to review a little bit though, if you take a look under the resources tab, this is everything that this CloudFormation template created. So go ahead and make sure you review those items so that you understand the resources that were generated. Now, the next thing to do to get your Godot client set up is to go over to the outputs tab and you're gonna to wanna to grab the WebSocket URI provided here. This WebSocket URI is what we're gonna use so that the Godot client knows where to connect for the matchmaker lobby system. 
So copy the WebSocket URI from the Outputs tab and paste it into your Godot client. And you don't have to use Godot for this. This actually will work for any game engine. Of course, you're gonna have to set up all the opcodes and, and that sort of thing. But I do have the Godot client available uh, down in the description as well. So if you wanna pick that up and have a full end-to-end -end example working, then you can definitely do that. Okay, so now that you have the matchmaker URL provided in your game client, go ahead and hit play, hit find matches, and you'll notice that it doesn't actually find any matches. And I covered this in a previous video, but basically I developed an administrative tool here that will create matches for you. Uh, you may wanna develop this a little differently. This is more for just you know development purposes, uh, but it basically creates a set of matches from a predetermined API call uh, with that WebSocket. And if we'll go ahead and hit find matches there, it does return the same matches. So let's go ahead and hit a 1v1. Okay, great, so now we're in the lobby. Now let's go ahead and hit 1v1 over here. Great, so now we're in the game. Now I didn't start the game. Let's go ahead and see if it'll still let us join if I hit host mode, yeah. Okay, so I just hit host mode out of order. I should hit that first, but now we're in whatever game, you know, whatever game you have or whatever, and you can see the other person running around or whatever your game is. This will work for any game type, whether it's 3D or 2D, it's just a matchmaker. And once the match is made, it will just hand off the game to wherever your game is hosted. Now I did explain all that in another video, so I'm not gonna cover it here, but just know that's the whole point of this matchmaker lobby system. So now that we know that's working, let's take a look back at our resources that it created. So if we go over to the resources tab, you'll see it created a Lambda function there. Now, if you wanted to edit this Lambda function, you can actually manually edit by going here and changing the code to whatever functionality you want to match whatever requirements you have. But just know if you redeploy or delete this cloud formation, it will delete the changes you made. So make sure you capture those changes so that if you want to redeploy it later on, those changes will persist. And also note that some cloud formation updates will be destructive. So they'll actually remove things that you may not expect. So just make sure you have a backup of whatever changes you made directly in the Lambda console here. And if we go back under the resources tab again, we can just take a quick look at the DynamoDB table. Okay, we'll go ahead and explore the table. And as you can see here, it, there's our matches and the two users that, that just played in that game. So great, we know everything is working and set up correctly. So if you wanna go back over to the CloudFormation template side and you wanna delete this, you can go ahead and hit this delete button. And if you wanna delete your stack, go ahead and select it and then hit the delete button and go ahead and confirm that you're deleting it and it will go ahead and remove all of the resources that it created earlier when you ran it initially. So now that you've seen how the one button matchmaker works, let's take a quick review about what CloudFormation is. So CloudFormation allows you to code your infrastructure and deploy and manage and scale whatever your backend services are. They don't have to be a matchmaker system. It could be any backend resources that you want to manage on AWS. Well, you can create that infrastructure through this CloudFormation template and deploy those resources at any time given that one template. And it can get pretty complex, like you can build out these infrastructures to handle fairly complex projects and deployments. But what I would recommend, and I believe what AWS recommends is first manually create the resources that your project's gonna need. And once you kind of have the scope, go ahead and create and build out those CloudFormation templates so that you can build from there and manage any changes using the CloudFormation method. And go ahead and deploy this in with whatever region you're most comfortable working with because lag isn't really a factor in matchmaking, right? You're just kind of waiting on other people to join. So you're not really syncing player positions or anything like that. And even if you are, if you develop to have like an in-game lobby system where people are running around, it, it's not that important, right? It's the pre-game lobby. So just pick whatever region you're comfortable with and go ahead and deploy this in. But if you develop your backend further, like if you want to extend this CloudFormation template, go ahead and do that and it'll allow you to scale and deploy easily to other regions. And eventually you can get this to deploy in multiple regions and expand as your, as your game grows. It's a really powerful tool and I recommend checking it out. And if you are interested in using this one button matchmaker lobby system, go ahead and use the links below to pick up your copy. Now, and like I said before, this will work for any game engine. The current system is designed to work for the Godot client example I had a few weeks ago. So if you wanna go pick that up and maybe have a full end-to-end -end project and 
backend infrastructure working without having to go through the manual process, go pick up that project as well. And it'll be really easy, just like I showed in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let me know if you have any comments or feedback on this or if you'd like to see something else along the lines of this CloudFormation stuff. Thanks for watching and make sure you're subscribed because I got a lot more on the way.